Hi there. In this lesson, I'd like to show you how to navigate on the canvas, but first I want to mention the option to import sketch files into Studio. So this is really cool, but remember it also has one drawback. If you import sketch file and then save it as a Studio file, you won't be able to wo work in sketch anymore. So it only goes one way. But this is really cool because you can now import your sketch designs into Studio and then create some great animations and micro interactions because this is really where Studio stands out. And also there is um, a lot of resources out there, for example, on SketchUp sources that are just basically sketch files, but then you can make use of it and import them into Studio. There aren't really a lot of resources for Studio for now, but you can easily use UI kits or icons for Sketch. And for the resources, especially for Studio, you can check madeforstudio.com. Here you will find different things such as animations and icons, some keyboard shortcuts, tools, tutorials, and UI kits. So this is pretty fresh, but and there are a few resources that you can explore here. So right now I want to open the Sketch file to show you how it works. When the document opens, you'll see some important issues and those aren't really serious issues, maybe some issues with text or some effects, but to be honest, uh, you'll be surprised how many things uh, just went through from Sketch and stays intact. So we have all the vector shapes and we have all the fonts in place. In fact, if I zoom in and select some element, you'll see that this is just a shape, a rectangle, we can add the fill and um, edit its properties. If you take a look at text, uh, even if we have, uh, for example, different sizes or different spacing in one text frame, it simply uh, goes through. And uh, also the layer structure groups and artboards are correct. And what's more, you can go to library and here you'll have the components that are basically sketch symbols. So symbols are imported with all the strokes and things that you might want to edit. So this is really cool and this is how you might work with sketch files. But for now, I'm closing this file and we're going to start from scratch with Studio. So let's create a blank file for an iPhone 8. And I'm going to alt click this little icon to make this bigger. And now I'm navigating on the screen. Well, this is the first thing I want to show you. If you press and hold space bar, you can change the view and you can place the artboard in the center. Well, maybe approximately in the center, because if you want to center it correctly, you'd have to use the shortcut and the shortcut command free, but you'll have to first select the artboard. Then you press command free and it's in the center. If you press command one, it will go fit screen. So it will fill the entire space that you have on the screen. And then you can go back to 100% with command zero. If you have any element in your design, you can press command three to center the view on this element. But you can also press command two to zoom it in. So this is really cool if you're working with icons or really small stuff. So I press command zero to go back to 100%. Now I delete this and press command one to fill uh, the view with the artboard. Now let's press command R and rename the artboard. I'm going to use the name home. And we've created an artboard for a device that's iPhone 8. And we can also obviously change it and we can also change the orientation. But take a look at those values. This is width and height and they correspond to the 1x scale for iPhone. If you take a look at this uh, really cool website, Paint Code, and take a look at iPhone 8 that we're designing for, well, its size is 375 by 667, and this is 1x scale. So this is a point scale, and this is how we will work in Studio. This is really good, but you have to remember that under the hood, those native pixels are basically four times the resolution you have here. So there are 70, 750 by 1334. It means that for the most of time, you'll be happy with working with Studio because its native tools are fully vector and you won't bother scaling to this native pixel size. But there's one exception and it's working with images. So if you have images and you import them into Studio, take a look what happens. I'm just going to drag and drop uh, this image here in Studio. And I also want to show you the properties of this image. So I press Command I on my Mac and here you have the resolution of the image. So this is 1920 by 1978 and the same resolution is now in Studio. Because the retina display 
has in this case a scale factor of 2x, it means that for the optimum quality, you have to deliver the assets, the image assets, that are twice the size. So if I select this uh, Jaguar photo, what I'll do is I go to the width and I'll simply divide it by two. By the way, you can use uh, the mathematical operations in all the input fields in studio. So you can multiply, you can contract, you can um, add, and you can also divide, in this case by two. And having this little lock icon uh, turned on will make that the aspect ratio uh, to be ma maintained so that the width and height will uh, adjust accordingly. So if I press return right now, this will be scaled and now you can see that this image looks so much better. So remember that the assets that you deliver to Studio will have to be scaled down two times, for example, for this retina display in order to work beautifully. Now, there are a few more navigation shortcuts that I want to show you, and this is pretty basic. If you press Command Plus, you will zoom in, so you can Command Plus, 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 or you can Command Minus to zoom out, maybe to 25 or 12%. You can also press and hold the Z on the keyboard, and then you can click, click, click in the place you want to zoom in. Also, you can press and hold Z and Option to zoom out, then you click, 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 and you can eventually click Z, and then you can draw a shape, and then you will zoom to this exact selection. Also, you can press and hold Command Option, and then press 1. So Command Option 1 will hide and reveal uh, the layers panel, then Command Option 2 will toggle the properties panel, and if you want to hide them all, you can press Command Option 3. So you'll stick with this top bar, and if you want to hide it, let me reveal uh, those guys, you can go to a presentation mode, which is Command Dot. If you press Command Dot, you will hide everything, and this is really useful if you uh, have a, just a small screen real estate, or you want to present in front of your colleagues. So that's it about navigating, and I'll see you in the next lesson.